Thanks for joining me on this episode of Deciphered. I'm Stephen Wabro, the co-founder and CISO of Halborn. And today, we're going to look at the two back-to-back -back exploits that happened on ThorChain's network back in July, and also their road to recovery, which includes audits by Halborn, Trail of Bits, a bug bounty by Munify, insurance protocols, and much more updates to the code since then. So let's get to it. The ThorChain ecosystem is comprised of many components, and one of them is what's called the Bifrost that acts as a bridge and allows users to transfer and swap different assets. It does this through the use of smart contracts called ThorChain routers, which are managed by vaults, and one of those is the ThorChain ETH router for Ethereum. And between the dates July 15th and July 22nd, the ETH router got exploited two times in similar ways. For each of the two exploits, the attacker made custom contracts that were based on the router contracts and used it to manipulate the logic and trick the Bifrost into thinking that it was receiving Ether when in fact it wasn't. Let's analyze the two exploits that ThorChain had to recover from so that they can come back and reclaim infinity. In this one, the attacker took the ETH router and wrapped it with his own custom modifications in there. With the wrapped contract, it was deployed to the mainnet and the attacker started interacting with it. The first interaction the attacker took on his contract was calling the deposit function. The deposit function contained a message value of 200 and this was sent to the wrapped router attacker created contract. The wrapped router sent the message to the Bifrost and modified the message value and the deposit back to zero. What this means is that the deposit event function inside of the Bifrost received a message value zero and deposit value of zero. The one thing that the attacker probably noticed was that the Bifrost reads the message value and parses it out. Parsing out the message value is actually a necessary function that's needed for router upgrades to do things like vault transfers, but what the developers overlooked was that this shouldn't be done for deposit type of events. Since then, we can see that the code has been upgraded to check to see if it's a vault transfer or not. However, at the time of the attack, this check was not enabled. So the attacker was able to trick the Bifrost by depositing nothing and making it think that it had a transaction value of 200. So what was the result of this parsing and the attacker depositing all his fake ether into the contract many times? Well, swapping into other ERC-20 tokens, this artificially raised the prices, and even though he was paying a large amount of fees, he was able to siphon out the Ether at the end with a deliberately bad memo and pulling about 4,200 Ethereum from the system. This equaled about $8 million in Ether, and it caused a huge opportunity for arbitragers within the system. ThorChain had to halt the nodes and try to figure out what to do with the Bifrost and stop some withdrawals before the system became insolvent. The second exploit occurred just about a week later on and it also involved a fake router contract but this time worked a bit differently. The functionality lived behind the router and used the return vault assets function in a strange way. What happened was when the fake router contract was sent ether, it emitted a deposit event. The Bifrost thought that the router was actually an Asgard vault. So when the Bifrost got a message from the attacker's fake contract, it saw that it was a bad memo and says, nope, actually, I'm just going to return the tokens back to the attacker address here. And this caused a transfer out and he could take all the tokens that he wanted. We can see that pretty clearly here with the data from the function transfer out, when it's decoded, you notice there's the refund right here from the transfer out. So once again, the Bifrost was confused, thinking that it was an Asgard vault and just a normal deposit with a bad memo, but instead it was the attacker manipulating it with another fake router contract. You can see here the bad memos that the attacker was sending in was actually messages to the ThorChain developers saying, you have to get audited and you have to take security seriously and don't ever rush code that's containing hundreds of millions of dollars. ThorChain actually took that pretty seriously and put together a return to operational plan which is going to get all of the nodes back online and the Bifrost up and running again after being audited by Trail of Bits, Halborn, setting up a bug bounty plan with Immunify, insurance plans and many more codes and improvements to the security posture. So. 
ThorChain is an amazing ecosystem with lots of functionality and lots of complexity. However, complexity is the enemy of security. So they're doing a fantastic job getting all the attention and resources that they need to have. Security is never perfect. It's always a continuous improvement. And they're taking the right steps to make sure that the network is as secure as it possibly can be and reduce risk for everybody. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm Stephen Wabro. See you in the next one.